Welcome. I'm glad to have you join me on today's edition of Just the Truth. Appreciate you joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Analysis of border documents shows that nearly 7.3 million illegals have crossed into the southwest border under Joe Biden's leadership. This is a number greater, you ready for this, than the population of 36 individual states, including my home state of South Carolina. More on this in just a moment. James Biden altered his story during a closed-door interview with lawmakers on Capitol Hill. Uh, We're told that he changed his story after congressional investigators presented him with evidence directly contradicting his claims, according to sources familiar with the interview that took place on Capitol Hill on Wednesday. A new Secret Service report released yesterday says President Biden's dog, Commander, was involved in a series of aggressive incidents towards Secret uh, Secret Service personnel between October 2022 and July 2023. You're not going to believe how many different people this dog is said to have bitten while in the White House. Now, I love dogs. You know that. Jesse and Simon, they're, they're they're our little boys. But uh, something was bad wrong in this situation. The Independent Women's Forum, known as IWF, has released a trailer and details about its new documentary series exposing the reality of housing biological males who identify as transgender with female prisoners. It's an eye-opening documentary series that you can see on YouTube as it will soon be released. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. The numbers are in. Nearly 7.3 million illegals have crossed into the southwest border while Joe Biden has been in the White House. This number is greater than the population of 36 individual states. The figure comes from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, which has already reported 961,537 border encounters in the current fiscal year, which runs from October through September. If the current pace of illegal immigration does not slow down, fiscal year 2024, when we get into the fall, will break last year's record of 2,475,669 Southwest border encounters. This is just getting outrageous, folks. How Joe Biden and how, how even the Democrats can sit by and allow this to happen just just blows my mind. I, I don't get it. I don't understand this. I, I get that Democrats are a little bit, uh, think a little bit differently than you and I do when it comes to illegals coming into the country. But th- this, is, this is going to destroy our country. Uh, The total number of Southwest land border encounters since Joe Biden assumed office in 2021, almost 7.3 million. 7, 7,298,486 to be exact, according to CBP data. That's larger than the population of Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa. It's more than Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana. It's more than the people who live in Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire. You kind of get the the gist here. More than New Hampshire, Nakota, Oklahoma, Oregon, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, Vermont, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Now get this. Compared to the largest U.S. states, the 7.3 million number is about 18.7% of California's population, which is around 39 million. 
23.9% of the state of Texas, and it's 31 million uh, residents, 32.3% of the population of Florida, 37.3% of New York is more than half the size of Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Ohio. Kind of puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Uh, were the number of illegal immigrants who entered the U.S. under Joe Biden gathered together and started their own city, it would be the second largest city in America after New York. And the total does not include an estimated 1.8 million known gotaways, not to include the ones that we don't know who got away. The known gotaways are people who evaded law enforcement. If you included those, it would actually be bigger than New York. Taken together, nearly 10 million illegals have crossed into the U.S. during the Biden administration. A a record Biden, critics assert, could only be achieved by intentionally refusing to enforce our law. Eric Ruark. He's director of research for Numbers USA. It's a nonprofit that advocates for immigration restrictions, says this unprecedented surge in illegal immigration isn't an accident. It is the result of deliberate policy choices by the Biden administration. And he's right. They're choosing to allow this. Why? I have no clue. And I've thought about it a lot. I've tried to think, why would you do this? And I know I get the argument. Well, they just want the votes. You know, they want to convert these people into Democrat votes. And that could be part of it. But but why in in a a day when our resources are stretched thin anyway, when American families, hardworking American families, those young families with two, three, four kids are struggling to survive, who are not able to obtain what was once the American dream because resources are going to these almost 10 million people. I don't get that. Even if you are a Democrat, I don't get why you would want that, why you would allow that. As you know, Republicans, anti-illegal immigration activists have, for years, blame Joe Biden for, for allowing this to, uh, this overwhelming surge of illegals. And he did it by reversing President Donald Trump's border policies. We, we heard a lot about that. If you watched uh, President Trump and the Fox News town hall that was right here in, uh, hosted by Laura Ingram, held right here in the upstate of South Carolina, there's a lot said about this. Laura Ingram asked Donald Trump a very pointed question when she said, how will you deport this many people? Now, I support Donald Trump. He was a wonderful president. Had he uh, been allowed to stay in office, he this would have never happened. These people would not be here today. The, the wall would be finished by now. He, he wasn't, though. But it's a good question, and quite honestly, if we look at his answer, he didn't necessarily answer it because I'm not sure that even Donald Trump, as smart of a man as he is, I'm not sure if anyone knows how, how we put this genie back in the bottle. Is it even possible? Let's just talk realistically now, okay? And and Donald Trump can do a lot of things. But can anybody, do you think it's possible that we will ever be able to hunt these people down? You know, that that was Laura Ingram's point the other night. And and she wasn't trying to have a gotcha moment with Trump. I, I think she was very friendly with Trump. She asked him good questions, and she presented him with a stage to, to really get his message out there effectively. But she pushed him a couple of times by saying, 
Well, how will you find them? How will you get them physically, get them back to wherever they came from? It's an overwhelming number of people talk about the logistics of doing that. Ponder on that one for me. Help me out here. Some of you folks who are much smarter than I, uh, send me a quick note on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-5639, 864-477-5639. Send me a text. Let me know. Do you think it's possible that we can find these people and send them back? Or or, Or are we just kidding ourselves? Are we just going to, uh, when, when Donald Trump goes back into the Oval Office, and I'm convinced that he will, is he just going to sort of plug the hole and keep more from coming in? Will we ever be able to to undo what Joe Biden has done? Your emails are welcome as, uh, as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Love to get your call. Uh, call me. On the uh, Furman Ford text line, 864-477-5639, choose the option to leave me a quick voicemail. L- love to hear from you. The, uh, the the president's, Joe Biden's critics, say that the illegals face more of a pull factor in the form of job opportunities and government benefits because they know that they will not face deportation under Joe Biden's lenient policies. So it's almost like a, an advertisement of saying, come on over, (laughs) Uh, come in, the water is fine. Uh, Ruark told media recently, quote, the administration has refused to enforce existing immigration law and taken every opportunity to aid and abet illegal border crossings through policies such as catch and release, mass parole, and offering temporary work permits to tens, tens of thousands of foreigners who make dubious claims for asylum. He said, in actual effect, the United States government is completing the human smuggling and trafficking process for the Mexican cartels. Now, think about that for a moment. I had never thought of it that way. But Joe Biden and his administration, this this is true. Mr. Ruark makes a very good point. Again, he's a director of research for Numbers USA. He makes a good point that We are. Our government is basically helping the Mexican cartels deliver on their promise and and in many cases what they're being paid handsomely for. Thousands of dollars by these poor people. Some save for years in order to be able to to, to make it, to, to live their dream, to achieve their dream of coming to America. And we're helping them. We're We're helping these cartels. Ira Muleman, a spokesperson for the Federation for American Immigration Reform Fair, said that migrants have learned in the last three years that they won't face deportation for entering the country illegally. Uh, Muleman said they have sent the signal that if you come to the U.S. illegally, you abuse the asylum system, you'll be released into the country and allowed to remain here in most cases, given work authorization. Even if you neglect to show up for your hearings, which most of them do, by the way, the odds of you being removed are negligible, and that's the problem. Uh, Muleman said the president claims he doesn't have the authority to enforce our laws. He absolutely does. He is deliberately not enforcing those laws. Uh, Biden has called on Congress to pass new laws. He claims that the... the uh, that the GOP Congress should pass laws that would let him solve the border crisis, like uh, the, the bipartisan deal in the Senate that included an emergency border authority to mandate Title 42-style expulsions of, uh, of migrants when migration levels exceeded 5,000 a day over a seven-day rolling average. It would also have limited the window for people to apply for asylum, provided immediate work permits for asylum seekers, and funded a massive increase in staffing at the border and more immigration judges, more bureaucrats, basically. That's what Joe Biden wanted all that money for that the GOP balked on. We don't have to spend more money out of our federal treasury to accomplish this. 
All Joe Biden has to do is get that magic pen back out and reverse the reversals that he did upon taking office. Donald Trump did it, and the laws haven't changed. Laws haven't been improved. So uh, I, I had a segment a couple of weeks ago. Go back and listen if you didn't catch it. It, it basically was asking the question. If the border wasn't broken when Donald Trump was president, but it's broken now, according to Joe Biden's administration, then who broke it? Go back and find that episode. Just just search back through Just the Truth. Uh, it, it's, it's worth the listen. Fortunately, conservatives in the Senate were able to put a stop to this latest scheme of, of Joe Biden's. They argued that the bill would have um, normalized record high levels of illegal immigration and said that Biden currently has all the authority he needs to reenact Trump's policies and secure the border, and they are correct. Joe Biden could stop this if he wanted to or if his handlers would allow him to. We don't even know how Joe Biden, what he really thinks about this. We know what the talking points are, the, the points that he tries to read from his teleprompter. We don't know what he really thinks. Joe Biden as a U.S. Senator, I don't think supported this over the years. So what's changed? The, uh, the debate over this uh, house Republicans, of course, impeached Homeland security secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas. The, the charges were refusing to enforce immigration laws Two impeachment articles advanced against Mayorkas, accusing him of refusing to comply with federal immigration laws and violating the public trust. Kind of general, but still. The mess, the, they got their message across. Senate's not going to convict him. We know that. First uh, secretary, though, impeached uh, since the late 1800s. Uh, DHS has been uh, critical saying that this was politically motivated and insisted that the Biden administration is enforcing the laws that are on the books. Bull. That that is bull. (laughs) Biden has said that history will not look kindly on House Republicans for their blatant act of unconstitutional partisanship that has targeted an honorable public servant in order to play petty political games. 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. The firm and forward text line is how you can be heard. You can leave me a voice message. I, I love your voice messages. Emails, joey at joeyhudson.com. A new Secret Service report that was released this week says that Joe Biden's dog, Commander, remember the dog, the first dog? That it was involved in a series of aggressive incidents towards U.S. Secret Service personnel between October of 2022, July of 2023 details in just a moment. First, let me talk with you a minute about PhD weight loss and nutrition. Saw some friends yesterday. Hadn't seen them in a while. They said, you look slim. When'd you lose the weight? Well, actually it was about three years ago. I I just hadn't either, either, either I hadn't seen them in a while or they hadn't noticed. (laughs) I, I, I can't remember which it is. But yes, I lost 30 pounds in just a matter of a few months when I first met Dr. Ashley Lucas. And boy, am I glad that I did. You will be too. Because you can lose that fat, that visceral fat that has developed in your midsection that is so dangerous for your health. PhD weight loss and nutrition is not a diet. It's not a fad diet. It's all about the science of nutrition. That's what it's based on. Dr. Lucas based his program on what you eat, how you eat, when you eat. And they give you these tools. And and the reason that it's so effective and that it lasts, that they have a wonderful maintenance program, maintenance for life. So if you kind of fall off the wagon a bit, all you have to do is uh, head back over and they'll get you back on track for the rest of your life. It's included. Call PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition today. Start your journey to better health. 
and to losing that weight that you've been wanting to get off for a long, long time now. 864-252-4925. 864-252-4925. You can go online to myphdweightloss.com. Get additional information there as, as well. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. Newly released internal documents from the U.S. Secret Service revealed that at least 24 incidents where the first dog commander bit or attempted to bite staff members while uh, he was a resident of the White House. Uh, the first documented incident occurred when commander grabbed a Secret Service member's arm as the president and the dog entered the palm room on the White House campus. Subsequent alter- altercations took place in various other locations, including the White House, Wilmington, Camp David, and the Biden's Beach House in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Despite the efforts by the Secret Service to mitigate the situation, commander's aggressive behavior persisted, leading to an ex- escalation in July of, of last summer, 2023, when an agent suffered a severe deep open wound, we're told, on the left forearm after being attacked by commander commander was eventually removed from the white house campus last fall the u.s secret service emphasized that their commitment to the safety and well-being of their employees and their continuous efforts to minimize any adverse impacts from family pets the white house has not responded to uh, media inquiries about the report commander's arrival followed the departure you may recall of biden's prior dog major who also exhibited uh, uh, aggressive behavior and was sent to live with friends in Delaware. What is it with Joe Biden's dogs being aggressive? It, it had to be tough too. I, I can't imagine having to send Jesse or Simon a way to live with someone b- because they, they were being aggressive and couldn't live in, in my home with me. But isn't it odd that the president has, has had two dogs with the same issues? Maybe it's just the White House. Maybe the, the uh, you know being in uh, a public home like that with a lot of people in and out and, and strangers. You know, even though the Secret Service agents are around to protect the Biden family, I would imagine you know th- there's a lot of activity in and out, a lot of stimulation. Maybe it's just too much. Uh, a bad environment for these dogs, but other presidents have had dogs successful. You got any, you got any theories on why two of Joe Biden's dogs have had to re- be removed from the white house? 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. Quite a story from the independent women's forum known as IWF as they are set to release a documentary about trans and I always get this confused uh, biological males who identify as women or is that tra- is that trans women I-, I guess it is uh, the problem is, of course, that in some states they pushed this to the limit to where they have allowed biological males who just suddenly identify as women to be transferred to female prisons. The Independent Women's Forum has released a trailer promoting this new docu series that they'll be releasing. I got some details for you in a minute. First, let me talk to you about your car. You need service on your car? Maybe you called and they told you it's going to be a week, two weeks before they can get you in. Doesn't have to be a Ford. You do not have, have to have purchased it from Furman Ford, but they're glad to service it for you. Furman Ford and Lawrence, it's my go-to. And it should be yours too for service. And if you're looking to purchase a new car or maybe a, a just a, a great pre-owned vehicle that you know you can trust, Furman Ford in Lawrence is the place to go. Find them online at FurmanFord.com. You can go online and see their inventory, see if they have something that you'd like. If you don't see it online, don't let that stop you. Just just head on over and talk with 
a, a salesperson. While you're there, say hello to Matthew Furman or Jim Furman. That's what I love about Furman Ford. They're locally owned. And, and when you stop by or when you call or when you send them an email, uh, you very likely can get a response from one of the Furman uh, family members. Furman Ford, their name is on the sign because their name is on the line with every single transaction. When you drive your new vehicle off the lot, here's what I like about it, though. Supporting local business. You know that your money is staying right here in our community. Visit my friends at Furman Ford in Lawrence. Find them online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. The series is titled Cruel and Unusual Punishment, The Male Takeover of Women's Prisons. It will consist of multi-episode interviews with various insiders, prison guards, female inmates on the impact of forcing biological women to share facilities with transgender women, men, forcing women to who are in a very difficult situation as it is to have to be worried about that male sex offender who might be sleeping in the bunk in, in the same uh, jail cell with, with her. Each episode we're told will be approximately five to 10 minutes. It's available for free on the IWF's YouTube account. IWF director of storytelling, Kelsey Bolar, explained that the project was born out of a desire to take a stance in this fight and to be a voice for current and former female inmates who sadly don't have a voice. They, they shared the first trailer for this new series, Cruel and Unusual Punishment. I think it's something that, that you might be in, interested in. California has passed legislation allowing transgender inmates in the state's correctional facilities to be assigned housing based on their gender identity. We were very nervous, angry. We weren't given a voice. No one asked us how we felt about this. No one did. In September, California Governor Gavin Newsom signed Senate Bill 132 into law. As soon as the transfer started, there were people having sex on the yard, in the porta potties. We're getting the predators, the sexual predators, people who have been incarcerated for rape, um, men who have been incarcerated for oral copulation, men who have been incarcerated for crimes against women. California now joins Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York City, and Massachusetts in recognizing inmates' gender identity. They were like kids in a candy store because they knew they were going from a men's prison to a female's prison. If this doesn't constitute bigotry, I don't know what does. Women's safety, their mental health, overall well-being, everything has been compromised. And if you're purposely putting a predator amongst prey, so to say, I don't got to tell you what's going to happen. Honestly, I really don't think the public cares. Well, I think the public probably does care. I'm not sure everyone is aware of it. Ms. Bowler said that once you hear these stories, she said, I think it becomes pretty clear that there's nothing tolerant or inclusive about these policies. In fact, they're actively discriminating against women. And she's right. And this is just part of, of, of the woke on the left. Anybody who thinks that it's normal to have men in women's prisons just because they identify as women. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what the, what these women again. It's it's a hard enough situation for them to be in prison to begin with, and you know they they they're all there for a reason. But still, you got you got to treat them as hum, humanely as possible. Uh, one of the stories we're told includes uh, woman to woman founder Amy Ichikawa who was previously incarcerated for five years at the Central California Women's Facility in Chowchilla. She served her sentence, and while she was there, the facility received convicted rapist Richard Mosbrook, who identified as a trans woman and went by the name Sherry in a prison transfer. 
she talks about how it was a, a blow to her mental health and her stability, knowing that a convicted serial rapist was in the same building with her. You know, I think it was about two years into my sentence, there uh, was a serial rapist who was extradited actually from Texas. Um, and he committed the rapes uh, in the same county as the prison that I was sitting in. And um, just the thought, the idea of this man being in the facility just struck utter fear and terror in the hearts of the 90% of women who are survivors of sexual violence and sexual assault. So uh, when the person got there, <clears throat> apparently it was because he um, attempted to mutilate himself and uh, that led them to allow him to self-declare that he was a woman. Um, it was very combative, very hostile, an angry person, uh, just generally upset. That would be something to be upset about. Bowler, who co-produced the series with Andrea Mew, said that the first episode will feature a former female prisoner who was housed in the same cell as a transgender prisoner. She said, I'll tell you from a policy perspective, I thought I knew this, but you don't realize these women are climbing up on the top bunk every night with a male sitting below them in their nightgown. It's little details like that that you don't even think about until you really do give these women a platform and the opportunity to share their story. Both women spoke about the disappointment they felt at the lack of support from other women's organizations and the mainstream media. Bolar noted that many current and former inmates were unwilling to speak about the policies out of fears of retribution and losing parole opportunities or even violence. More fortunate, uh, more unfortunately, Ichikawa noted that up to 90 per, uh, 92% of female prisoners have experienced abuse in their lives and could potentially face sharing facilities with biological male sexual offenders. She talked about this, this 92% of incarcerated women in California who have been battered and beaten are subject to some form of sexual abuse. Now they're forcibly being housed with males who 33.8% are registered sex offenders. So think about that. You, you have a female who has been sexually abused, ends up in prison for whatever reason, and then she ends up rooming in, in a very small cell with a sex offender. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line where Jeff speculates. Nikki Haley will not drop out, he says. She's waiting to see if one of these charges sticks. Uh, possibly. Susan, we don't rig elections, Nikki. You really think Biden got 81 million votes, Nikki? I'd call you bird brain, Nikki, but I don't believe in insulting birds. Now, Susan, let's be nice. <laughs> uh, Ace, two things, he says. One, President Trump said the same thing that I had said before. He legally attained documents, and Joe Biden did not. Two, I think Nikki Haley is still in the race because she's trying to put a Band-Aid on her quitting everything. I can't believe that she actually said that she's not a quitter. Please have a great day, Joey. I smell spring. Yeah, spring is in the air, isn't it? We, we have some daffodils that are about to, to pop open. Appreciate your comment, Ace. Faye writes, wish I was like the old TV program, Bewitch, so I could wiggle my nose and cause Nikki to fly away. Surely voters realize she's not trustworthy. She is a liberal dim going and coming. Wow, you... You guys have, uh, you've taken on Nikki Haley, haven't you? Uh, by the way, I, I spent some time yesterday at Sp in Spartanburg at the uh, pr uh, main polling place at the county offices there. Got to visit with my, my buddy Curtis Smith, chairman of the uh, GOP, Jared, and uh, I, I, I had, a, had another visitor I'm going to tell you about in just a moment. But I kind of did my own little exit polling call, call, because that, that is a polling place there. I, I voted early because I'm going to be traveling 
on Saturday. I've got some big news for you next week. You, you don't want to miss just the truth next week. So mark it on your calendar. T- tell all your friends to, to tune in. But uh, can't can't tell you. Can't tell you everything right now. But I'm going to be traveling, so I needed to go ahead and, and vote. And it was interesting. I, I was able to to visit uh, with with some folks. And it seems that South Carolina is embracing early voting. Now, if I'd had my rathers, I would have gone to vote on Saturday. Again, I'm traveling, so it's just not a, 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 an option for me. But a lot of people in and out yesterday. It was a beautiful sunny afternoon. A lot of people coming in and out of the Spartanburg polling place. Uh, so if you want to take advantage of, of early voting, uh, you can do so. Uh, regardless of which county you're in, be sure and check. Make sure that you know where to vote because not, not all the polling places are open. A lot have been combined. So check that first to save yourself a little frustration and some time. Uh, Ray writes, hello, Joey. At the Huddle House today in Seneca, a waffle, one egg, two strips of bacon, and a glass of milk, $18. No inflation here, <laughs> tongue in cheek. That's kind of like, uh, that's, that's about what my breakfast was at Demas Brothers, uh, Ray. Hey, Joey, it's Jennifer. So question, she says today, who do you think it's going to be, Joe or Gavin? Who will the Democrats run for president? So that's the million dollar question, Jennifer. I don't know who it's going to be. I can tell you who it's not going to be. I don't think it's going to be Joe Biden. Our text of encouragement. Listen up. Uh, we we've have heard from our, from our friend. Thank you for so many of you who have prayed for our friend, uh, who has for years now been sending me a text, text of encouragement says, Dear Joey, because of you and everyone's prayers, I am walking and talking. I believe this with all my heart. Remember, smile. God loves you and all his children. Sign, Joel, your inspiration of the day. Now think about this, folks. Think about the difference that your prayers have had on this person's life. And up until this past week, I've never known the identity of, of my mystery uh, tech, texter of, of encouragement. But, uh, Joel, I'm so glad. Thank, thank you for sharing that with us. And keep the prayers coming. Keep the prayers coming. Uh, speaking of that, uh, wow, guess who I met yesterday in Spartanburg while, while I was at the polling place? Remember hearing me talk about Kathy from Spartanburg who uh, wrote me a very heartfelt text about being touched as I was telling you guys about our our text of encouragement person who had who was in ICU who's very ill yet and, and again I've learned that his name is Joel yet while Joel was having some real difficulties himself. He was still encouraging us from the hospital as he could. Kathy said it just really touched her and it, and it touched me as well. Uh, Kathy writes, uh, Hey Joey, it was a blessing meeting you today. Tell Peg and Nana Hudson that Kathy said, hi, Kathy is great to meet you too. Uh, I, I'll have more to share with you in tomorrow's episode about my visit with Kathy. 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome as well on the Furman Ford text line. News from Capitol Hill today. James Biden, the president's brother, altered his story during a closed-door interview with lawmakers after congressional investigators basically called his bluff, presenting him with evidence directly contradicting his claims this according to a source familiar with what happened in these closed door meetings. I got the details here for you. First, let me talk with you about your, your washing machine or your dryer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to have to call Jeff because Nana Hudson's washing machine 
uh, it's not spinning right. She, she called me the other day, said that uh, she had a load in the washer and it would not go through the spinning cycle. And, you know, going to have to get someone out here. So I had text um, for, for service. Then she called me back, said, can, can, cancel it, cancel it. It's, it's running now. Well, I knew it wasn't going to last for long. Uh, you know how how it is when 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 it starts. Sometimes uh, it, it'll come and go. Well, it it's gone again. <laughs> so I got to get my buddy Jeff to get Nana Hudson a new washer and dryer. Uh, if you're in the market for a, a any appliance, frig- refrigerator, stove, dishwasher, and you don't want to have to wait weeks or months for it, and you want a good value while getting a quality product then you need to go to Pickens and shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. They have an uh, an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating, nearly perfect reviews on Google. And the team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they have the knowledge that you need to have confidence in your purchase. They'll show you around the warehouse. It's just over 11,000 square feet, and it is packed full of new appliances. And they'll help you find the right solution for you and your family. They offer extended warranties. They have uh, um, a, a, an award-winning service department. They, they truly have you covered after the sale. Visit with my friends in Pickens at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Find them online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. Joe Biden's younger brother was in closed-door testimony with the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees, uh, initially told his interviewers that he was not part of a business deal involving Hunter Biden and several of his associates. Now, now this is according to sources familiar with the interview. It was a closed interview, no no media allowed. So we don't have any video or audio or anything, but but this is according to sources uh, that um, I think the Daily Call, uh, yeah, the Daily Call are uh, reporting this. Uh, They say that after investigators showed uh, Mr. Biden, an agreement that had his signature alongside those of Hunter Biden and other business partners that James Biden then told legislators, I, I didn't, rem- I don't remember signing that. Sure. He does not The deal in question was a proposed joint venture involving an entity known as Sino Hawk and the Chinese communist party, CCP. It was tied to the CEFC China Energy Limited Energy Firm, according uh, to sources, 50% of Sinohawk was to be owned by Hudson West 4. It's an entity that is managed by CEFC emissary and Joe Biden office mate, uh, Gongwen Dong. Gongwen Dong uh, used to be uh, uh, have some office space in the building with Joe Biden. He's known to have ties with, uh, with China and with, uh, the other 50% was going to be owned by Onita holdings, LLC. It's an entity composed of LLCs controlled by Hunter Biden, James Biden, Rob Walker, James Gilyar, and Tony Bubalinski. Uh, this according to Bubalinski's testimony on February the 13th to congressional investigators. The president's younger brother also said that he threw out a diamond that Hunter Biden had given him to appraise, uh, uh, according to a source familiar with the interview. The diamond had initially been given to Hunter by CEFC chairman Yi Jiming, presumably to woo Hunter Biden to engage in business with this uh, Chinese company, CEFC. A May 2017 email from Gilyar to Hunter Biden and Bobolinsky and Walker detailed the potential equity split for the Anita's piece of Sinohawk. This is where we had uh, the, the uh, initials, 20% for H, Hunter, 20% for RW, Rob Walker, 20% for JG, James Gilyar, 20% for TB, Tony Bobolinsky, 10% for Jim, as in Jim Biden, and 10 held for H, the big guy. Yep. 
10 held by H for the big guy. This, according to the archive of Hunter Biden's own laptop that we have known about for a couple of years now. Actually, the FBI knew about it before the last election. Bobulinski told the FBI in 2020 that Onita was supposed to receive a $5 million unsecured loan from this uh, Chinese company, CEFC, and that the loan was supposed to be forgivable, according to an October 2022 letter signed by uh, Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa. As of July of 2017, the funds had not yet been sent to Onita, apparently to the uh, disappointment of Hunter and James Biden, because on July 30th, 2017, that's when Hunter Biden sent the threatening text message via WhatsApp to a Chinese business associate affiliated with CFC. According to information disclosed to lawmakers, and this by the Internal Revenue Service whistleblowers, Hunter, this is when he sent that threatening text. I'm sitting here with my father. We'd like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand, and now means tonight. And he goes on to, to threaten the person, saying, we got to have an answer. My dad's sitting here, which implies that Joe Biden will do something about it if they don't respond. Bank records obtained by congressional investigators do not indicate that Sino Hawk ever received the cash. However, records and other information that have come out in the uh, Republican lawmakers investigation show that Hunter Biden and James Biden received a $5 million profit via a wire transfer from a CEFC linked firm in August of 2017. These, these dates are too close together for it to be a mere coincidence. These funds, uh, again, do not appear to have been transmitted to Sinohawk, but to other entities. Now, is this confusing for you? Is it, is it hard to keep up with all these different names? Sinohawk, Hudson West, Owasco. It's supposed to be confusing. That was by design. This is why they set up the Hunter uh, Bidens and the James Bidens and, and, and the whole Biden crime syndicate. That's what they do. You set up a bunch of LLCs so it's harder to track. Remember uh, the, the Chinese guy talking about how it would take years to, to ever track the money? Bobolinsky told investigators on February 13th, according to the inside sources, that the Biden family, Joe son Hunter, and his brother Jim knowingly and aggressively defrauded him as the CEO of Sinohawk Holdings and as a member of Anita Holdings uh, at the end of July 2017, and the Biden family violated their fiduciary duties to Sinohawk and Anita as they enriched themselves at the CEFC trough. Uh, it appears that Bobolinsky, what he is saying here is that the Bidens went around his back and rather the, the having the, the Chinese to transfer the money to Sino Hawk, which Bobolinsky was uh, the leader of the CEO of looks like they, they went around that and had the Chinese wire it directly to the Bidens. That's what some of the bank records appear to indicate. We'll see. Uh, I don't think this is going away. Yeah, it's at a slow pace. It's a snail's pace. But I do think eventually the Republicans are going to hold them responsible. This is why this year's elections are even more important than ever. This is why we have to maintain and grow our majority in the U.S. House and retake the Senate. Then these impeachments might actually lead to something. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Hey, I appreciate you joining us as I uh, broadcast from the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit myphdweightloss.com. And, and when you call PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, be sure and let them know that you listen to Just the Truth as uh, our other sponsors, Furman Ford and Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Hey, and if you haven't joined our mailing list, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button uh, so that you get our emails. And I'm going to be sending out uh, 
some of the details of next week's show. Again, we got a we got a special week plan for you next week. Also, find me on YouTube. Uh, just search for Joey Hudson on YouTube because I'm going to be documenting some of my travels next week on YouTube as well. So you you don't want to miss it. Just to go to YouTube, search for Joey Hudson. If you can't find it, send me a quick text. I'll send you the link. Thank you again for spending some of your day with me. Keep the comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. Keep those emails coming too, joey at joeyhudson.com. Back again tomorrow. Hope you'll plan to be with me then. Until then, remember, God's got this. He's still in control.